another attack, another set of victims, and we move on. Now, Senator representing Anambra South Senatorial District at the National Assembly, Ifan Yuba, has confirmed the death of some of his personnel and security aides during an attack on his convoy in Anambra State on Sunday. About six policemen attached to the senator were reportedly killed. Paul, what is happening? It's as if the southeast, I never knew that region to be this, uh, in terms of um, armed attack, gunmen, and but, uh, brutality to be this bad. Because I saw that video and I was like, what's happening? Well, that is now the reality in the, in the southeast. One had thought that there was some kind of lull or um, decrease in the spate of attacks in, or, or should I say high profile attacks in that region. But from what we see now, it's clear that um, things are not rosy in that place. And um, it also, it lends credence to the, to the fears in some quarters that hmm, <laughs> those who think elections might not hold hmm. because of violence. I mean, those who have the fears that you can see that they, their fears have some form of uh, justification. Now, what we see is that uh, now that it seems that the federal government is stepping or the, author the military authorities are stepping up, security forces are stepping up their game in the dealing with terrorists, especially in the uh, northwest and uh, northeast. I think that southeast should, it has been a place of interest, but the, uh, the authorities should be more interested in the security of that place. Um, the so-called unknown government, I don't believe they are unknown. I don't believe they are unknown, uh, but unknown in quotes. It's time for uh, the security, the authorities, to step up their game in that particular place. You know, the usual thing we do when things like this happen is that you have lots and lots of condemnatory statements. It's like a, it's, it's a ritual, you know. When something like this happens, you hear so-and-so has condemned, so-and-so uh, has condemned. And you've, you've seen spate of press releases condemning the act. You've, you also read, of course, when things like this happen, you read statements from the police and all of that. But beyond all of this, when will these people be arrested? When are we going to put a stop to all of these things? So what is happening in that place, place is very painful. It's very, very painful, and um, we need to nip it in the bud so that people can have confidence. On one hand, we have, uh, in the southeast, on one hand, you have, um, uh, a high, you have high pop saying people should sit at home and, uh, on certain days, you know. On the other hand, you have people being killed. And I was discussing with someone, I said, look, you know, if you look at the figures, you have six, seven, ten, you know. But it does not matter to me if it's one person that, that is killed. That person is a soul. It's important to someone. I'm sure my, 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 my producer took time to, you know, um, edit this video so that it will be suitable for the yeah. cast. The it, one I saw yesterday. It's, got, it's actually gorier than the, what we see. Yes, yeah. I saw, exactly. what I saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the vehicle, vehicles in the convoy, you could see people, policemen. You could see DSS, you could, you know, and they all done, they, they were shooting into the air sporadically and randomly, maybe because of Senator Ifa Yuba himself escaped through whiskers, maybe he had an armored uh, vehicle. Yeah, that's that report, that his that car was bulletproof. bulletproof yeah. yeah. I think the, we have been here before, and it's unfortunate because remember when the Boko Haram people started? They got a lot of support from the locals, thinking that this was a, a religious or cultural war. The same thing is happening to the unknown women in the uh, southeast. We have some people are giving them credence because they assume they are fighting for the Biafra cause. But you and I know that, just like it happened in 2015, whenever you bring people into a system and you can no longer control them, or the reason why you brought them to the system is no longer available, they use the arms and ammunition you've gotten for them to cause me. Exactly. And so these people are becoming uncontrollable. And I know uh, Senator Bob, of course, is a very high-powered personnel. 
from that part of the country is a one mile house court. And for him to be targeted like this in his own senatorial district reflects the danger that we all face. Don't forget, people don't go out on Mondays simply because, not because they were ordered not to. Because those who have dared to do that have been gone down around most of the states in the southeast. And now we are getting this on weekends, and we know that tomorrow they've also given the order that nobody should come out in the southeast. Why? Then, I think there's a court case somewhere. Okay. And they well, said, so on Tuesday, nobody should come out again. So today, are, is mon today is Monday now. Uh, that one yeah, is, is a given. Monday is a Monday is a given. They have an extra day <laughs> to go online and abuse other people while their homestead is not safe. But having said that, I think we need to worry ourselves more. That if the, because the South is the smallest in terms of geographical spread in this country. It's compact. It's a very compact space. It's less than loyal states. And you are talking about people who not being allowed to move in such a compact element. Imagine what will happen if they are, they are able to spread out to Asaba, to Wari, to Portacourt. Imagine the kind of mayhem they will cause for the people living in that neighborhood. I think it's about time that the federal government does not treat this as a local matter anymore and treat it with the same level. They are treating the bandits and the, and the terrorists. The federal government went, before now, they proscribed the activities of the IPOB guys. And um, this, are they the same people as this unknown government? Or are we still under the guise that people come from other states or from the north to act as unknown government? Are we still under that? Uh, it, it does assumption. Not, yeah, I, I think that assumption is not correct. We what seems apparent is that there are several groups. The military wing of IPOB. Yeah, exactly, ESL. there are several groups. Although Ima Powerful will come up to say no, it's not us. Now, if actually it's not the mainstream IPOB, it seems it's ostensible that um, there could be a, a splinter group. Break, you, break you know. away. But the truth of the matter is our our dear. Uh, uh, fellow citizens from the southeast must realize that whatever may be their grievances against the state, the, the, the region suffers the ugest loss, you know, when they begin to kill their brothers and sisters or begin to, or continue to cripple the economy of the region over sitato mothers, you know, simply because you, you feel that. Um, your leader is being unfair. I personally think that, of course, we, we, we created the Nigerian state through its insouciance, created Namdi Kanu. But I think that they should just allow this man to have his day in court. He is not guilty yet. And there is no, nobody knows whether the, even the court will, <laughs> will, will, will let him go free. Why don't you allow the, 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 the system to, to take its course? What's the purpose of killing people, you know? Killing people, including your, your, your home people, and people who came from other parts of the country, because we've seen, we've also uh, read of cases of people from the north being killed in the southeast. Now, wherever these people are, whether the, some of them are bandits from wherever, or they are homegrown uh, uh, terrorists. terrorists, we don't, what is happening in that place? Nobody gains. That the southeast loses. And Nigeria also loses colossally. Mm. Now we've seen, I've seen video. The the last one that happened in Imo State, somewhere in um, Imo State, right inside um, the front of um, the office of the Independent National Electoral Commission. Gunmen went there and stopped people from registering, killed people, sh were shooting, and saying that no to election. Election will not hold. This, that, and everything. Now, uh, before, because of what he said, now it's like five months to the, that election, and has anything changed in terms of security or to guarantee the safety of lives and property on election day? The federal government would need to put in um, things in place so that to give people confidence to come out and exercise their franchise freely. Uh, two days ago, I would have said yes. That they now have a and other outlets to vent whatever anger they have through what I call constitutional means. But obviously, you and I know that there will always be an elephant in the room. Okay, let's take this call. Collins is calling us from Enugu. Thank you for your lost connection. 
Uh, but we all know there will always be an elephant in the room because no matter what you are fighting for, there will be people in your group who will believe that you are too soft or you are too hard. Some people say you are not going far enough. So they will sprint away and form a more core, what the Americans will call dyad group. It happens everywhere. It happens even with Boko Haram. Some people will decide that, okay, you are becoming too mainstream for our liking. This is not what we started. And you are becoming soft. So they're not go at core. I think there's a very small group, whether it's Airpub or Airpub Splitter, I don't really know the name, that are hell bent on making sure the elections do not hold in the East. I think that's their mantra for now. They don't care whether there is a, a similar advantage for somebody from that area to become a candidate or to become a, they don't care. As far as they are concerned, their main mantra is to get the Biafra Republic, and no matter the level of incessant movement they see, they don't care. Others, of course, will have moved in the direction that fine. We have another outlet now to, to gravitate towards in solving this problem. But there will be some people who don't believe in that and continue to do this. Don't forget, more than, I don't have the figures, I don't want to be called a liar, but a substantial number of INEC offices have been bought in the last one year. A substantial number of police stations have been raided in the last one year. And we thought that this had gone down, but obviously this will be the start of another round towards December when everybody will come. Okay, Falabi is calling us from Songwater in Ogun State. Well, good afternoon. I greet you. Yes, Falabi. Uh, Gani and uh, Mr. Dada and uh, also uh, uh, AY. Uh, you Go see, ahead. the problem of Nigeria uh, is becoming an unbecoming. I think it, we should not polarize our position on the IPOC. Since they have not claimed to be the one, I think we should look somewhere else. I think the problem is that we are lacking intelligence from the security officers. How do some individuals just what thing will happen if they do not have any traces of the image? It is it is bad. Something is wrong with, with the security system. Let me decide with ourselves. We should not put that. Oh, sorry, Mr. Falabi. Now, it's as if the government of the day, they've lost, you know, kind of the power to take charge of the Southeast. What am I saying? That, oh, a non-state actor is saying, don't come out on Monday. And we have five states. Mm. And they will all comply. Every Monday now, <laughs> activities. Yes, our brothers in the Southeast, they do call into the program. And they complain that that thing, in spite of the fact that they try to reverse it severally, that means we don't have security on ground. People cannot see security to say, look, they are, uh, the, they their life their lives. Of, uh, mm. property will be protected. The situation is mind-boggling, very worrisome. It should bother all of us. If government today, if the police make announcement that everybody should go about their normal business, we've guaranteed your security. And a group, whether it's hypo ball and says nobody should go out. People would obey hypo. That's what that's what People happens. Would, it, that, that is the situation we find ourselves. You know, I, I am inclined to think that ordinarily, non-state actors shouldn't overpower government. Non-state actors shouldn't be able to, I mean, dictate the pace or the direction of the society. Non-state actors who say offensive offensive things, who come out with offensive decisions should be taken out of the picture. But what if that Let's quickly take this call. Emeka is calling us from Anambra State. Thank you, Emeka, for joining us. Good evening, uh, John Sankar's crew. All right, go ahead, Emeka. Yes, what happened in uh, Enugu yesterday was, like the last call I was saying, when you talk about unknown gunmen, where is uh, intelligence report that will make this, our security forces to get these people down. If in a society where things work, I don't believe on non-government. They are human beings, they're not spirits. Yes. So they must wake up to the responsibility to bring these people out. Because enough of this is happening, not only in Anambra City, it's everywhere in the country. All these stories are everywhere. Where is the intelligence report from our security agencies? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mika. I was actually, let me finish my thoughts because I, I understand what they are saying. They said intelligence, intelligence. We've even had cases in this country where intelligent reports were given and no action was taken. 
I am inclined to think that we were told that the Kujie prison break exactly that they had. And then you might even see law enforcement agencies arguing among themselves mm -hmm. or trading blames. Uh, this is what I think that I'm inclined to think that there is no genuine effort. There is no genuine effort by people who are in charge to cleanse the whole girl's table, to really make sure that Nigeria becomes a safe place for all of us to live in. Because when you have, when you have issues of intelligence, people are complaining there's no intelligence. What about when there is intelligence? Where there is intelligence? And then attacks are carried out and people are trading blames. Agents are trading that we gave intelligence report, nothing, it, it was not acted upon. Then something, something is wrong somewhere. Why are heads not rolling? Who got the report? Who was supposed to act on the report and re 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 refused to, to do so? So heads are not rolling. We need to see heads rolling. If heads are rolling in, in those agencies, then we know that maybe there's some level of seriousness in this country. There is, no, there is no genuine, that's what I think, there is no genuine intention by people who should do it. There's no genuine intention to make sure that this country is safe for all of us. Now, it's... Uh... Now a story of if you don't have bulletproof. a bulletproof car and you're a politician maybe based in Abuja, <laughs> you should just sit in Abuja for now. Uh, but you, that you, you your town uh, might not be as safe as... Well, we know some uh, senators too who cannot go to their home states and they are not from the southeast. We know some who have not been home in four years. They've gone to the capital <laughs> of their states. They cannot go further to see their people. Things are that bad. My, my own concern about the status is that if you cannot get it right in this place that small, that compact, compared to other parts of Nigeria, what do you think will happen in a state like Niger that is uh, four times the size of the southeast? I'm looking at this in geographical terms. Mm. That intelligence is fine, but the place is so compact that you cannot move a kilometer or two without in a settlement. It's not like a savanna. It's, a, it's a, inside the deep forest right. of the... Yes. Uh, swamp, and you are talking about people moving around with guns and machetes and nobody to report it. And how far can they walk on foot? How far can they drive in a space? So, because that's really my fear. Because we can, we can excuse some areas that you can move for 10, 20 kilometers and not see a soul. Okay. I, uh, let me pick OK's call from Anambra State. I think I should go Hello. that route this evening. Thank you for staying with us, OK? Hello. Yeah, no. Yes, okay, you are live. Go ahead with your contribution. Okay. Yeah, um, what do people are saying? Maybe sometimes, let me just tell the truth. The truth is that we are shedding all these people are doing all these things. Like, like in Anambra, most of most of all the other people are the killing and not killing. We know them. Everybody knows them, but we, the people, we are shedding them. And if any security man trying to we trying to put a, a, a sentiment and other things that we are doing this, they are, they are doing this, they are not doing this. That is the only problem we have in Nigeria because we don't we don't focus on the troops, but calling names or other. If, if I need, let me say in Anambra, something will happen. The next thing I will say is like or these people or this tribe did it. Instead of we to tackle our own problem, but we try to tackle our own problem. That is the only problem we are having in Nigeria. Hmm. Focus on your own problem. Solve your own problem. But instead of you to focus on your own problem and solve your own problem, you will be calling another name. You know the people that they, you know the people that do all those things. But you cannot say anything. Because most of these people are big men, some of them are supporting them. That is the, only, the problem we have. Thank you, okay. No, 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 Thank no, you for your no contribution. <laughs> okay, it's yeah. trying to hit the nail, yes. you know, and telling us that, look, that they know these big people and they don't need, that, they don't need to be calling outsiders that, <laughs> for their problem. That, that is, I, I, I agree with, okay, and um, I, it's from Anambra, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. You, know, you know, sometimes when we hear that six people are killed, ten people are killed, sometimes we think about figures. We don't think that those people are human beings. They are fathers, sons. It's, it's no longer. Uh, it's no longer. But if, if, if someone again. close to you, if mm. your brother, if it has happened to your brother, you know, sometimes I, I, I haven't recovered from the pain of losing someone. 
I used to have a mentee in the church I used to attend. Very beautiful young lady, Igbo lady, who came to Lagos, but her parents were in, in Katsina. During, one, during uh, a mayhem, this young lady, I still remember, I still visualize her. She was set ablaze mm. along with her brother, one or mm. two, I think two of her siblings, with a friend. Sometimes when I recall it, the, the pain rises in me because that, that's someone I knew personally. So these six people or 10 people or 20 people, 100 people, some of them could be breadwinners to, to people. Some of them were beloved. No, even this one person, that person is valuable. So we must do something about it. We can't continue this way. <coughs> I think it's a challenge like to uh, security operating. Uh, it's a challenge because mobile policemen, DSS, and some other guys, security guys, we, we, you know, were killed in this attack. So it's a responsibility. It's their responsibility to fish out these elements. Yeah, a few years ago, I would have agreed with you because there was a time that we have this saying that if you really want to die, go attack a policeman. <laughs> you know, that one is guaranteed. Mm. So and I know in this Lagos here. He wants to kill a policeman. Chances are under 24 hours, they will fish you out. Okay, let's. Um, Ekene is calling us from Inewi, in Anambra State. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, Ekene. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, journalist Anga. Thank you for the good work that you are doing. Uh, let us, let us, like what happened yesterday at uh, Enugu. It's a, it's a very, it's a very tragedy thing, and it's a very painful thing. In short. We are mourning in Inewi right now because of this situation. That's his constituency. No matter the person that is involved, the people that is involved, we are really mourning. We are not happy about the situation. And not the thing that is doing, calling names, say this uh, IBOP, Fulani, that is not what we need. Hmm. Let the, if the intelligent, let them go straight to what, that is what, what we need. Calling names will not help. What do you need? Calling what do you need? I'm talking to you now. In Anambra State, we are living in fear. We can't drive freely. We can't move freely. Security. It is crumbling business, crumbling everything. My, my, oh, I don't know. I don't know where Nigeria. And okay, I, I feel. Let's let 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 our okay. politicians, let our politicians use this as an example. Election is coming up. We don't know what is going to face up. Yeah. Election is coming up. Let them put things in place because we don't know what is, we are not praying for this disaster. But let them, let them put it in place to save the life of people that will come out and vote that day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution, Nikini. It's yes, a, it's this is yeah. part of what we said earlier. That's uh, how the Independent National Electoral, uh, Electoral um, National Community will do it. Yeah. INEC, how they're going to put, make sure they work with security agencies. Because even recruiting ad hoc staff you know, very hard. You know, yeah. in that area, <laughs> You know, by coppers and everything, we have to look at it critically. Exactly. And um, these this, this guys now, they are, they are afraid already from what he can be saying. I, I, could, I could hear the pain yes, in, in his yes, voice. Yes, he's saying that they want government mm. to do something. If one mad group, one mad group comes up on the election day and says nobody must come out, People won't come out. People won't come out. It happened. There is no guarantee that out. they will. Be no safe. matter what, no matter the assurance INEC tries to give, or uh, if the, if the if IGP likes, let him say that they, 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 they are deploying whatever number of uh, policemen or what do you call the other one, NSCDC. Mm. People can't be assured if this continues like this. It's not a crime to vote. Um, it's not a crime to, to elect your your leaders. Now we keep saying this that we need the uh, state police. People think we are just. We are getting to a point where nobody will have a choice but to defend themselves. Yeah. And that's where we are going. Because the essence of the state police is because they are nearer to information than the federal police can ever be. No matter if only the policeman is an indigent of the area, he will not do the same thing as a person who knows that his job is tied to the security of his own people. All right.